Hey Pfingsters and welcome to today's video. So sometimes, uh, very seldomly I get asked what is the dog string in Python. So for example you have an object, say uh, object dog and your dog does something or nothing, it doesn't really matter. So we have a, a, a method, so like functions within objects are called methods, they are associated to the, to the, to the object itself and um, now you could for example you can create a dog say um, bellow you create a dog like this okay and then you can do so, you can for example cool, uh, call bellow do nothing or so so now this is say the um, overall structure of our example and now where does the dog string come into play so the dog string is um, if you um, so if you if you use uh, triple quotes to um, define so now you can use triple quotes for each method and for each uh, class, for each object, for each function, um, you, every, every, anywhere. So the, uh, immediately after the definition, you can have a dog string. For example, you can have your best friend here for the dog example. So this immediately follows after the definition. For example, you can have a dog string for the for the object. You can have a dog string for the function does nothing really <laughs> so it explains what the function does what the dog does uh, it gives you some context contextual information or the user of your functions and your definition so this is considered good style to have a dog string okay the so dog string explains what the thing does what the thing is and um, and, inter and now interestingly interestingly you can uh, for example um, anywhere you define so for example you can in the code you can do um, you can call bello, bello for example dog okay and you simply you can access the dog string with this underscore underscore dog underscore underscore notation so this double underscore is also called for short dunder in python so so we have a dunder uh, method dog and uh, we can access it by bello, just calling bello dot dunder dog and um, we can also like print the same thing for on the dog level on the dog class so this is how we can access the, the um, dog string and now we can print it. Um, do nothing takes one, ah, okay, I have to, like I have to use a self here because it's a class definition. Okay, and you see now the output is your best friend. So the output is the dog string. Yeah? We did, we, I mean, we didn't do something like this equals to something. So this we didn't do. I mean, this, then you could expect that if you, if you access dog or bello dot, done the dog uh, for the dog string then uh, the, the, this would be the output we didn't do this actually python does it uh, like internally they automatically assign the first um, triple a uh, string enclosed in triple quote that follows the definition they assign it to this variable underscore underscore dog underscore underscore this is a dog, dog string and that, now the question is where is it used why, why do you need it actually and um, so there, there are many applications for example if you create your own uh, code your own code base, like a module, for example, a Python module, um, that you make public for the uh, to the world. Okay, so everybody can access this module. Then you can use the Sphinx Python documentation generator, and it creates such a beautiful documentation. So let's let's maybe quickly get rid of my face here, <laughs> somehow. So now you can access this beautiful. Doc you can generate this beautiful documentation completely automatically. Okay, so it's like you don't have to do anything to. To, to, to do this, you just have to act to use the Sphinx documentation generator to create this HTML uh, documents, to create this web uh, documentation. Okay, so you can have, for example, getting started, you, can, you will have the functions here, you can access the functions like this, then people, users click on your function, then they see the explanation of your function based on the, on the doc string. Okay, so the doc string uh, gives you the power of um, generating meaningful um documentations automatically by um by means of a tool like sphinx or so okay so and this is not only the only thing but also if people will use your objects there and they for example uh, they don't know what to do about it so if they i mean this wouldn't work here i guess if i have bellow dot something do nothing okay let's say do nothing then it will give me some tooltips. So this is, I mean, this only advanced 
code editors like IDEs have these functions. But for example, if I type this do nothing, then I don't know this function, what it, what does it do? So while I, while I type, so advanced IDEs have this functionality, I type do nothing, then it proposes, uh, proposes the correct method do nothing and it also gives me information about this method what is it about and this is done dynamically so as I type this in I see ah okay the do nothing method does nothing really okay so so I maybe maybe I use another method or or as I create a doc so as I, as I create this doc uh, object it then automatic automatically uh, tells me ah dog is your best friend okay so it will automatically give me these two tips and this information and this is for uh, I mean, it's con considered very good style to have these dog strings. And um, so there's an, ad an advanced uh, kind of best uh, uh, dog string convention. So there are some conventions about the dog string, for example. So because dog strings should be, um, should be, um, they should be very standardized so that people understand them. I mean, you should not put things maybe maybe like this into your doc strings. So doc strings should be meaningful and there's like a whole standard you can you can shine you can check out the uh, doc string standards. So um in many cases it should so you should try to uh, to have one line doc strings if if it is possible uh, for obvious cases yeah and you should use uh, triple quotes um Yeah, you should use, use no plank line either before or after the doc string. So it should come immediately here. You see it comes immediately after the class definition. Of course, you could do something like this, have a blank line, but you shouldn't actually add this blank line. Um, it should, the doc string is a phrase ending in a period. So it prescribes a function or methods effect as a command. Do this, return that, not as a description. So for example, not returns the path name or something. It should, should be like do function, this should returns nothing, period. Okay, so this would be considered a, a good doc string. And uh, so it should, should give you the information what it does and it should not describe it. Okay, so it should give you directly the return thing or what it does uh, as an as a action phrase. It should not be a signature that just iterate the same thing. So you should not do something like this. Uh, do nothing self <laughs> so it should not like give exactly the same signature that is already in the uh, function definition because this doesn't provide any meaning uh, it should be it is better to write something like do x and returns nothing yeah for example this is this would be a good doc string because it has a meaning um, it should be so for, this is for, this was for single line doc strings for multi line doc strings there is a whole uh, like discussion what you sh can include and what you should not include um, so you should maybe if you if you have multiple arguments let's say x y z then it would be would be a good thing to like um, start start your your multi-line doc string like this then we have like the triple quotes and here and um, yeah, of course you should you should use the proper intendation and then you can have keyword arguments for example and maybe the x argument some magic number then some description of this argument then you have the y argument um, some profane number and set your name for example yeah so it describes the uh, keyword arguments this would be a good doc string you have like it's properly structured it tells you what it does what it returns and it gives you some more information about the keyword arguments okay so you can have some very advanced information in your doc string and this will of course help the users of your um uh, this will first first of all it will help the, the users uh, of your application if you program your own applications if you program your own modules but also secondly it will um it will give you like a meaningful documentation that is uh, that can be accessed by coders that try to extend your code base afterward because and even by even by yourself if you come back to your code like from a year ago it's good actually it's very good to to actually know what the function does so like of immediately seeing what you thought uh, when defining the arguments and so on yeah if you don't have this then reading your own code is is very messy um after you come back a year or so yeah um so it should be you should 
actually you should also document for your own good to understand your own uh, code better. Okay, so then there are a more like a more there are some more uh, specifications and best practices for defining doc strings, but this shouldn't uh, this shouldn't mean that you should not try it out even if you haven't read the specification. So just try the doc, doc string. Uh, and then optimize over time. I mean, then you can look things up. For example, should should this start with a new line or not? So it is considered be best practice to have the open opening uh, triple string and then immediately start with the documentation, not starting with the empty line. And but then in the end to have an empty li line like this here. We could of course do the same like this, but this is considered like worse than this one. Why? Yeah, because you can immediately see the opening and closing uh, triple quotes, they are at the same level in the uh, in the code intendation. Okay, so therefore it's better, uh, it's like it's easier to grasp. Okay, and there are a few more, but uh, yeah, don't uh, stay too long <laughs> learning all of those specifications. You you can do it if you are like if you reach the intermediate code level and you try to get advanced, then you can uh, consult the of the official. Uh, PEP standard for the doc string. Otherwise, just use it in your own code base. It will make you a better coder. It will uh, improve the understanding of your old code bases and overall increase your productivity and increase the clarity of mind you have uh, when coding your own projects. Okay, thanks for listening to this video and see you in the next video. Bye.